Is Poker Face a game of Texas Hold'em you should go all in on or fold early? Let's find out now. Hey everyone, this is David Stark from Watcher Pass, and I'm talking about Poker Face, which comes to theaters on November 16, 2022, and digital on November 22, 2022. It is a poker-based drama that is co-written by Russell Crowe, directed by Russell Crowe, and stars Russell Crowe. So Russell Crowe is the big draw, but it also has a pretty great cast, including Liam Hemsworth, Riza, and Elsa Pataki. My hot take is, I actually think you should pass on it. Look, I was pretty excited. I wanted to see, uh, you know, the, the premise sounded pretty good, and I liked uh, Russell Crowe, and I wanted to see what he could do. But ultimately, the movie just didn't really do it for me. It didn't grab my attention, and it kind of had a very, very slow story. So ultimately, I think you should pass, but I'm going to tell you a little more of the film, a few things I liked, a few things I didn't like, and then briefly go into the ending, though I won't talk too much about it. There will be spoilers in the ending section, so, you know, if you don't want to know what happens in the film, turn it off at the ending section. I'll tell you when that happens. You'll be able to know, um, but up until then, it'll be vague. So, Poker Face is about a tech billionaire and gambler, Jake Foley, who's played by Crow, who is hosting a high-stakes poker game for some of his childhood friends. They all come together for this like big poker game. He hosts them. He's fabulously wealthy, so he makes it like a, you know, a very fun environment for them. But as the evening goes on, it seems like maybe there's more at play here than just a game of poker. And some some interesting things happen both because of uh, Jake and also outside of his control that turn it into a fairly eventful night. So I'll get into more about the story a little bit later, but first let's go into things I liked about the film. The first is the cast. It has a really interesting cast. Like I was really excited to see Russell Crowe, Liam Hemsworth, and Rizzo, like how they would interact. And for the most part, they're fine. But, you know, I, there, there are some things I didn't love about the movie overall, but the characters themselves, the cast is, is, a, is a pretty good cast to assemble for this poker night. Uh, and the second thing I liked is the setting. Like the, the film is set in this just beautiful house that's kind of in the middle of nowhere. It looks like what you would expect a, a tech billionaire's house to look like. It, just beautiful glass, just nature all around. Um, just this wonderful, wonderful location. It made for at least an eye-popping setting, something that was really beautiful at the start. So things I didn't love as much about this movie. The first, it's it's a pretty slow pace. Like, look, it's a poker movie. Poker can be a slow game, but this movie took a while to get going like a very long while and even when it started to kind of get a little interesting there wasn't a ton that happened until like the last half an hour it really is kind of some friends at the start and then they get together for a poker game there's a few surprises um but it's kind of vague uh, up until about the last half an hour the second thing i didn't love is Look, I just didn't really feel any emotional attachment to the characters. Like, the, it is kind of a on paper interesting cast of characters. You got a tech billionaire. One of his friends is like a politician. Um, you got one of his friends who's having a little bit of trouble. You got one of the lawyers from his company. It seems like it would be an interesting cast of characters, but I just felt no emotional attachment to them at all. I'm not really sure what it was. Maybe it was a slow pace. Maybe it was the fact that I just really couldn't get into the characters, but it did not hold my attention. Um, and that kind of leads into the third thing I didn't love. And this kind of is related to all of that. It is, there's really not that much that happens, especially in the first two thirds of the movie. Like it's, it really does feel kind of like just friends meeting for a poker game. There's not like a ton of humor. There's not a ton of drama. There's not really much of anything that goes on. It's, it starts with a, like a, a flashback uh, from Jake and the other characters in the movie's past. And that didn't really hit my emotions. And then the movie kind of keeps going after that. They, they start, they get ready for this poker game. They have this poker game. There's a few little pieces that are introduced uh, during the poker game. But overall, just not a lot happens. And that really hurt the whole thing for me. You know, the pace, the emotional connection. It just, it just didn't grab me. The fourth thing I didn't love is, especially the last third, the, the, the plot gets a little convoluted. There's some surprises that happen that, Again, because you don't really have much of an emotional attachment to the characters, didn't really feel like that big of a surprise. There's some revelations that happen that uh, none of the characters seem to really, I don't know, take as, as you would expect. And so it feels like they kind of threw some wrenches in there and tried to like intentionally obfuscate the ending. But at that point, I just had stopped caring. So it just felt like they were just throwing in these additional aspects at the end to kind of dial up the drama, dial up the, the intrigue. And it didn't really hit for me. 
And the last thing I didn't love is all kind of related. Uh, it had really an unsatisfying ending. So I'm gonna go a little bit more into the ending again, very briefly, very briefly, because I'm not I'm not gonna talk a ton about it. But if you don't want to know what happens in the film, turn it off now. Um, but like I said, I, I think we should ultimately pass on it. So maybe maybe you don't care. If you do want to go in without knowing much about the plot, then I would turn it off now. So what we find out in Poker Face is that uh, Russell Crowe's character, Jake Foley, is dying from pancreatic cancer. So he wanted to get his friends together, I guess, for this like last poker game. But it also seems like he's trying to air some demons uh, out here. So he uh, he, po he like puts a mild poison on one of the friend's glasses. Um, I think it was to like make him feel the, the pain that Russell Crowe is feeling right now. But it wasn't really that well done of a, of a plot point. And he didn't put enough to, to kill him. So it wasn't like a big dramatic moment. It was just more of like a, a strange inconvenience for this character. So they also introduced a little bit of drama. So we find out that the politician is being blackmailed, I guess, because he's on video with uh, some girl. And then we find out that one of Russell Crowe's friends, the one that he poisoned, is actually having an affair with Russell Crowe's wife. Um, and so that is supposed to be a kind of a big dramatic moment, but they don't push it enough i think it feels like everything gets resolved a little too conveniently they don't really get into like a huge fight after some of these revelations that happen jake's wife and daughter also come to the house but in doing this they inadvertently let in this kind of like group of criminals who have been watching the house just waiting for their opportunity and when this happens you find out that the criminals are there to steal some of Jake's art. He's a billionaire. He's got some really nice art. There's like a $200 million painting in the house that they're trying to get. But you also find out like that the main villain art thief was one of the people that knew Jake growing up. He was in this like preliminary flashback scene where Jake and his friends were playing poker with uh, like an older kid and they... And Jake ended up winning that kid tried to beat them up and, and the kids all ran. Again, there's a very tenuous connection. Um, and so like there's this big reveal, but at that point, I, I didn't really it didn't really hit me emotionally. They could have just really been any crime boss or any like thief randomly showing up and trying to steal his art. Like it didn't really it wasn't this like big, oh my gosh, aha moment. It was just like, oh, okay, I guess they know each other and and now this person's trying to steal the art and also threatening their family. So a couple of the criminals like go off to find this piece of art that they're trying to get and they take a couple of Jake's friends with them and then Jake is left with his family and this like criminal who knows them who is like threatening uh, his wife and daughter. And so there's kind of two separate scenes. The ones that are going off to the art, those friends eventually kind of fight off the attackers. There's, there's this kind of like really quick fight. Again, like it seems like there should be more drama here, more action, but it, it doesn't really feel much. Like the there, there isn't a ton of drama because I didn't have any connection with the characters. And then when they have the action scene, it's, it's over pretty quickly. And so they fight these thieves who are trying to get this art piece. And in the process, one of the one of the thieves like shoots his shotgun. And you're like, oh my gosh, what's gonna happen? And uh the thief actually shot the painting that they were trying to steal. And so he ruined this like $200 million painting that he was like obsessed about, he wanted to take. But the, the two friends eventually overpower the thief and all as well. Now back with Jake, the person holding the gun, I guess his name is Victor. He is holding a gun to Jake's family. And so Jake ends up kind of outsmarting him. He says, hey, you know, you've been poisoned. Uh, I have an antidote and some cash in the safe. You know, let me get it for you. Um, because that Victor had drank from this poison glass. So he started feeling the effects as well. And like we mentioned earlier, Jake didn't poison him enough to kill his friend he just wanted to like teach him a lesson but he, the the criminal doesn't know that so jake tricks him into open into like having him open the safe jake opens the safe grabs the money grabs the the antidote and that criminal like takes it and just injects it into him but wouldn't you know it jake tricked him it's actually poison so that criminal then like runs out of the house because he's starting to feel like the effects of the poison and dies in their front yard or backyard, one of the two. And then that was kind of the movie and you kind of fade to black. And the next thing you see is a funeral and you find out that Jake had, had succumbed to his cancer and you see a like will reading session 
And again, this was kind of a strange one because like there wasn't a ton of drama in this event and then everyone ends up getting like a ton of money from Jake's will. Like, I think I think everyone got like $50 million except for his daughter who got like the rest of his estate. And so you have this like big resolution, this this big kind of windfall for some friends that weren't really great to him, I guess. I mean, they seemed like they'd gone back a long time, but they didn't seem like they were all super, super close. Um, but in any event, so at the at the will reading session, you know, everyone kind of gets something. Drew, I think, is his business partner or lawyer, gets like the companies and future profits. Uh, the politician, uh, Jake tells him to get out of politics and gives him $50 million to um, you know, help that so that he doesn't have to have this like stress on his life anymore uh, to Jake's ex-wife and his friend, Alex, who was having the affair who Jake poisoned. Um, he gave $50 million to, to kind of let them live their life. He's also set up a fund for their children and to Mike, who is Liam Hemsworth's character, uh, who's had some problems with, uh, with drugs. He gives $50 million, but also makes him go to 12 months of rehab. So I guess maybe it'll turn out well. I don't know. Maybe $50 million might cause him to go back into some of his bad habits, but at least he has to do 12 months of rehab. Hopefully he'll be fine. And then his daughter, he gives everything else. So his daughter can live her life, do what she wants. She's fabulously wealthy. We'll find out what happens to her, but that's the end of the movie. Everyone kind of ends up fine, except for Victor who tried to steal from Jake. So that was Poker Face. Like I said, I didn't really love it. It just really didn't come together for me. But let me know what you think. Let me know if you liked it. It comes out on November 16th, 2022 in theaters and November 22nd, 2022 in digital. And thanks so much for watching. If you like this review, please like and subscribe to this channel. It helps me out a lot. Make sure all my new content goes straight to you. Thank you. Thank you.